You're very welcome back to the course. In the last lecture, we finished off on our keyword research process. You now have your chosen keywords, which will be the centerpieces for your content. So what we need to do now is actually create content around those keywords. And in this lecture, we're going to get started on that process and really move into the on page SEO section of this checklist. This is the checklist that you will use every time you write a new blog post or create a new piece of content um, because this covers on all of the things that you should have on your page to make sure that it's optimized and ready for the search engines. In this lecture, we're going to cover the first three points and then the subsequent lectures, we're going to be working through them. So by the end of this next few lectures, by the end of this part of the checklist, you will have a perfectly optimized SEO optimized piece of content. First thing we need to do then is actually come in to our website builder and create a new post. So inside WordPress here, it's just post, add new. It'll be very similar on any other website builder that you have. And this is where we're really going to implement every single one of these steps. Now I have my Yoast SEO plugin installed here as well. If you have a WordPress site, make sure you have this set up before uh, we get started on this. I installed it a couple of lectures ago, but this will really help you out and remind you to complete all of these 11 steps every single time. If you don't have a WordPress site, don't worry. I've written all of the points here anyway. First thing we want to do is really pick one keyword per page. And uh, the Yoast SEO plugin is a great reminder for this. It shows you focus keyword. So I'm going to pop that in right there, SEO checklist. And essentially what I'm going to do as an example here is rebuild this post I've already made. You're looking at a post here that has followed exactly these 11 steps, but I'm going to rebuild it from the start so you can understand the process and not just the end result. But this is an example that you can come back to again and again and have a look at. Now, after I've picked my focus keyword, what I need to really do is write the title tag. And the title tag is really what appears in the search results here. So we looked at this before. Um, this is the title tag here. This is the title of your blog post, the title of your page. It's an extremely important indicator to Google what your whole uh, blog post is about or page is about. And uh, so you really want to spend a bit of time optimizing this. If you do nothing else from this list uh, except this, well, you'd still be doing one of the most important things. So make sure you get this done at the very, very minimum. So the thing that you want to think about is every page of your website should have a unique title tag. You'll remember earlier in the course, we optimized your homepage title tag. You want to do essentially the same process here for each blog, blog post. And preferably, you want to start with a relevant keyword. You want to start with your focus keyword. So I can edit my title tag here inside Yoast and get a preview of it. You can also just add it in up here as well. But I can do the work down here and uh, I'm going to start typing it in. So SEO checklist, it's best if you can start your post with really the keyword that you're going after. Now you don't have to do that exactly. You can see a lot of these search results haven't started with it exactly, but that's best practice to really start with your focus keyword. Now, another thing that you can do to pick up some more searches is add in small modifiers like best 2016, etc. And you can see that here that um, people have added these 2016, etc. in here because a lot of people do search for that. They search for checklists, templates, tools 2016. If there is something like this that would often get updated or need to be updated, you know, people will type in small little modifiers like the date. So you can add that in if you want. And I've actually added that in my title here. If you'll notice, I've just put it at the end. Um, so potentially I can pick up some additional searches for that term of some types in SEO checklist, but really as well, just as an indication that this is up to date and is up to date to the other uh, ones in the search results. So now I've got my keyword in there. What else do I need to do? 
Well, I need to keep it at a certain length as well. You've got a limit to how long your title tag can be. It can really be 55 characters or less. Otherwise, it'll appear truncated in the search results. Let me give you an example of this. I'm just going to type in home insurance. I want to show you about what it looks like if it if it's truncated. So I think I saw an example here. Where was it? This is what it looks like if your title tag is too long. It shows the title tag, but then it's cut off at the end and you can see the dot, dot, dot. Essentially, the title tag here is too long. This company could probably shorten it up a little bit to have the full message within the 55 characters. I think it just looks a little bit more professional and uh, make sure that you're, you're communicating your message in, in the frame that you have. Inside WordPress, it'll show you here the exact uh, length that you have for example the green is like the good area and if you start to put in more than that it turns to red so you really want to avoid that there what do you put in here then i would suggest you really look at the title tags for your competitors as well look at what they've done and you have to think about how can you really stand out so there are a number of other checklists for me here 29 points 20 41 points um 40 points so obviously i don't have the longest checklist i did that on purpose so i want to keep it pretty simple so i can't compete on the number of points i don't think that'd be a good idea so i'm going to try and make it more specific to who this checklist is actually for and what i'm going to say is seo checklist for new websites i actually noticed earlier that this is one of these search terms that i highlighted it gets 30 searches a month so i could potentially after a while start to rank for this term initially and then after a much longer time rank for the uh, keyword seo checklist so i can pop that in because it's very relevant to my audience i think a lot of the people who will be taking this course and looking at the checklist will be brand new websites or uh, looking at it again so i can just take that keyword and now i'm really going to be ranking for uh, the longer tail version of this keyword which is great as well. One other thing I noticed as well that SEO audit checklist gets 480 searches a month. And so I don't have that exact term in my title, but I can just add this in as well, SEO audits. And people really know that not only can they use this checklist for uh, new websites, but they could also use it for SEO audits as well. So that is really the thinking behind the title that I wrote. I would suggest you follow that process as well. Follow these rules for the title tag and uh, really have a look at your competitors and think about how you can stand out in the search results. Because um, remember, this is what the end uh, and this is what the process is all going to look like at the end. If everything's stacked up here and somebody's making a decision, you want to try and have a title tag that really jumps out. Now, after that, let's look at the URLs. The URL is really the URL for the page. And you can see here, mine is just forward slash SEO checklist. So how did I actually set that up? Well, inside SEO Yoast here, you can actually just set this and you can see how this is going to appear. Very easy to do here. I think what you really want to avoid are uh, URLs that look something like this. Oh yeah, here we go. You know, uh, forward slash P equals one, two, three. Now you want to make your URLs really human readable. And also if you're trying to make it easy for people to remember forward slash SEO checklists, it's easy to know how to get to the page very, very quickly. So you want to keep these uh, URLs as short as possible. By default, uh, what will happen is your whole title will be put into your uh, URL here, but you can just shorten it down to the main keyword. Um, so you can make it easy for people to really get there and remember it. Now I know I have a quite a long domain, but if you have a shorter domain and you just say forward slash, whatever it is, you can almost say that to people and they will know where to go. So what we have done is really cover off on the first two points there. I think the final thing to mention is separate your keywords in your URL with hyphens. You never want to have it like this with underscores because Google will read that all as one word 
or is Google read this as separate words? So that's just one final point on that. Make sure that's done there. All right, so we've already got through a one of the major parts, really, getting your title and URL and having one focus keyword. I'm going to wrap this up now. And in the next lecture, we're going to focus on meta descriptions. This is what really appears here in these search results and getting it right can massively boost your click through rates.